In Winterset, Iowa, Bobby began to beg for food, but his place of residence remained unknown until Father Harris trailed him to the outskirts of the town. It was then that the priest uncovered the true nature of the situation. Almost everyone in Winterset, Iowa, knew each other. Father Harris had grown up in this small town, and it was a tight-knit community. That's why he found it strange when some of his parishioners mentioned a little boy in the area. Yes, Father. A little boy named Bobby comes to my house every couple of days asking for food. He can't be older than seven or eight years old. Mrs. Santiago told him after Sunday Mass, can we do something to help him? He only asked you for food? The priest asked. Yes, I always give him a little something. He said it was for his sick mom who couldn't work anymore. But when I asked him where he lived, he said there and pointed in a random direction. I don't think he has a home, but I can't be sure. Mrs. Santiago clarified. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, Mrs. Santiago. I'll ask around and see if others know more about this boy, Father Harris assured the older woman. But almost everyone in town said the same thing. One older man, Mr. Jenkins, said that he had seen the boy sitting on the bus stop crying the other day. He tried to approach Bobby, but the kid ran off. He might not be comfortable around men, Father Harris thought. But mostly, Bobby came to people's houses, asking for food, then left immediately. Some folks confirmed that he got spooked whenever someone mentioned going with him to see his mother. So Father Harris decided to take action. Eventually, he spotted the little boy walking around town with a bag full of food. The kid was headed to the outer limits of Winterset, which consisted of empty lands with no one around. Now the priest was worried. Winterset might not be the coldest town in America, but it could get pretty nippy that time of the year. Father Harris decided to follow the boy as subtly as he could. At some point, he lost sight of him and almost lost hope of finding him that night until a dog barked. The dog was right outside a tiny, run-down hut on an empty lot. It was surrounded by snow and must have been so cold inside. Bobby came out to see why the dog was barking and his eyes flared after seeing Father Harris. Don't worry, Bobby. I'm here to help. People around town told me about you. Is your mother inside? May I talk to her? Father Harris inquired him while moving closer. Can you really help us? Bobby wondered innocently. After Father Harris guaranteed that he was only there to help, Bobby went back into the hut. He came out again, almost immediately, with a little girl who couldn't be older than four. Is this your sister, Bobby? Father Harris wondered. Also, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. Yes, we don't have a mom anymore. Mom died some time ago, and our dad disappeared even before that. I was afraid mean adults would separate us. But people are nice here, Bobby revealed. Of course, people are nice here, Bobby. Everyone is worried about you, and they want to help you, Father Harris added, hoping to build trust with the kids. He also started patting Sparky, a beautiful German shepherd. But we can stay here together. I want to find a job. I can take care of my sister. Bobby insisted in his high-pitched voice, pointing at the hut behind them. Father Harris sighed. Bobby, you have taken care of your sister already. But you also need someone to help you out. It will get too cold this time of the year. You need proper shelter. But I can promise you that no one will ever separate you, the priest swore. What about Sparky? The little girl asked, speaking up for the first time. What's your name? Father Harris replied. Rosie. Oak, Rosie, I also promise that Sparky will be with you guys. Don't worry, he's part of your family too. The priest comforted them. Now, will you come with me to the church? I have nice warm food for all of you, including Sparky. Bobby agreed as the nights they had spent in the hut had been pretty scary. He encouraged his sister and they followed the priest. Sparky trailed behind them without hesitation. There was a utility room and extra cots available at the church. Father Harris would have everything set up for them. They ate and went to sleep, with Sparky curled on the floor next to their beds. The following day, Father Harris asked around and estimated that the boy's mother must have died approximately three months ago. Then he called CPS to see about finding them a home. The social worker revealed the authorities had been looking for the kids all this time. She thanked him for finding them and talked about placing them with the foster family immediately. However, Mrs. Santiago told him to tell the social worker 
that a couple in town had been trying to have kids for ages. The McCarthys are so nice. They would be wonderful parents, and I know they love dogs too, the older woman insisted. After discussing the matter with the social worker, Father Harris received approval on the condition that the couple completed the necessary paperwork, underwent an inspection, and became authorized foster parents. During this process, the children remained under the care of Father Harris and the nuns, staying in the utility room of the church. Two weeks later, Bobby and Rosie were welcomed into the McCarthy's home, and Father Harris and Mrs. Santiago received heartfelt gratitude from the family. The entire town was delighted to lend a hand.